In this section, we're going to talk about something called a matrix. A matrix is just an array of usually numbers, and certainly in our context, it will be an array of numbers. Uh, you would have one matrix, spelling that wrong. Uh, you would have multiple two or more matrices. Occasionally, rarely, but occasionally, you'll see matrices spelled like this. It looks like matrices, but it's much more common to see it spelled with a C. One thing our book does not do a particularly good job of uh, in, in, this, in this area is to f uh, describe the transition between where we've just been and where we're, where we're headed now. We, we were looking at systems of linear equations. Now we're talking about matrices. So where is the connection? Here is a system of equations. And if I wanted to make a matrix out of this, what I would do would be to take the coefficients 3 and 2 and the 12 that's on the other side of the equal sign. And for the other equation, the 2 and the negative 5 and the 10, put those inside a set of brackets, and that's a matrix. It's actually called an augmented matrix because it contains entries not just for the coefficients of the variables, but for the answers to the equations as well. It's not the answers, but the, the, the values on the right-hand side of the equal sign, right? And sometimes you'll see uh, an augmented matrix with a, a vertical line uh, separating the entries uh, of the coefficients from the entries of the, the, the constant, right? the constant terms. So this is an augmented matrix. I don't actually need that line down the middle, so I'm going to go ahead and erase that for just now because I want to talk a little bit about something else here. Um, matrices have different sizes. This particular matrix is a 2 by 3 matrix. We always measure the size of a matrix by counting the number of rows. There are two rows here. And then the number of columns. And there are three columns. All right, so the, this matrix is, matrix is 2 by 3. A 3 by 2 matrix would necessarily look something like this. All right, it's got three columns, sorry, three rows, and only two columns. So the, the order in which the numbers, when you're talking about the size of a matrix, the order in which the numbers uh, appear in that description of the size, that order matters, right? These are two different sizes of matrices, two different orientations. So the order of the description two by three versus three by two, that order really matters. To sort of extend the description of what a matrix is, um, we said that we could take a system of equations like this and turn it into a matrix by taking the coefficients and the constant terms uh, out, actually, what we're doing is taking the variables out and leave on, leaving only the, co the coefficients and the constants. And if we do that, if we take the variables out, leave just the numbers, um, put them in a box in just the right order, we get a matrix. Well, it could also be argued then if we have a matrix, we can say that that must have come from a system of equations. And that, in this case, the system of equations would look something like this, 1x equals 2, 0x equals 1, and 6x equals 10. Now, this, this one doesn't happen to make any sense because of that middle row there. So that's as far as I can take this analogy. But it's important to note that you can go in either direction. OK, now, so we want to be able to talk more in generalities about what matrices are, what they look like, and how we annotate them. So um, I'm going to start here by giving you an example of a generic matrix. Uh, don't get too attached to this one because I'm going to change that up just a little bit pretty soon here. But I'll start with this and say that if I didn't know what the entries of my matrix uh, were, I might say there were A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, or they might be P, Q, S, T, and U, V, for example. The problem with this kind of annotation is that we're very good quickly 
uh, depending on the size of our matrix, we're very quickly going to run out of letters. Not only that, but it's really hard to tell just by looking at uh, one entry where it is in the matrix. So we're going to develop a system of annotation for each entry in the matrix that's going to help us uh, on both of those counts. One of the things we're going to do is we're going to we're going to use the letter A as our generic um, constant value indicator, right? It's kind of a variable in that it's an unknown, but it's not a variable like an X would be necessarily. Uh, remember back in the very early um, section of this uh, this chapter, just the last section of this chapter, we defined what a, a linear equation was, and we said it could have as many as n entries in it, right? We had um, a1, x1, plus a2, x2, all the way up to a n, x n, and that was equal to some b value. Now that only works if you only have one equation, so we then had to say, well, what if we had, um, we'll call this one a11, a12, a13, up to a1n. And if we have a second equation, we can then say that's going to be a21, x1, plus a22, x2, and so on. And we can do that as many times as we need to. We're going to do it m times. running out of room there. That's supposed to be an M at the end, not an N. Um, and if I take the coefficients out of that system of equations, I end up with a matrix that looks like this. A11, A12, A13, up to A1N, and then B1, A21, A22, A23, up to a 2 n and b2 and i'm going to keep going until i get to a m1 a m2 and all i've done here is exactly what i did in the previous steps i'm primarily talking about this step up here so i took the coefficients of the of the variables in the system of equations and wrote them in the same order in a matrix so i'll just finish this really quickly it's a M, N, and then B, M. And that is the matrix that comes from that system of equations. If I try to find a row somewhere in the middle here, um, I, I'm just going to call it, I've kind of run out of room here, but I'm going to, I'm going to call it, let me do a little bit of erasing. Normally you would see all these dot, dot, dots because they're an important part of the description of what's happening. And I'm going to take them out. And I'm going to include, I'm going to insert another row. I'm going to call it the ith row. So I have a i1, a i2. I would have a i3. Ultimately, I'm going to have a i n and b sub i. But I'm not going to do a i3. I'm going to find some entry somewhere in the in somewhere between a i1 and a i n. Um, but I don't want it to be a specific entry. I'm trying to generalize every piece of this process. So I want to find a general entry, and I'm going to call it A, I, J. I'll write that off to the side a little bit bigger. A sub I, J. Now when I look at my matrix, I can pick any entry in the matrix. And the subscript, this one is 2, 2, tells me that it's in the second row, second column. Let's find a different one. Uh, I kind of have to stick with the ones that have numbers, don't I? This one is in the first row, third column, and so its subscript is 1, 3. Okay, and the, the generic one, this A, I, J, is in the ith row. This is the ith row, and it's in the jth column. So this is just a way to describe a particular entry in a matrix. The ijth entry is the 
entry, the number in the i throw in the jth column. This could be handy. I'm going to erase uh, some of my ex extra extraneous things here um, because I can actually take this this whole matrix and sort of abbreviate it as because it's generic, right? I don't know what any of these values are. I'm just going to say any entry might be the i jth entry. So the entire matrix can be written as a sub i j. Now I'm going to erase some things over on this side because another piece of information that we need here, another way of annotating or the way another way of describing a matrix is to say it's matrix a. A lot of times a matrix is just described as, you know, capital A or capital T or capital S or capital G. Um, a and B are, are pretty common uh, letters in the alphabet to use for the name of a matrix. So A is the name of the matrix. A sub I J with matrix uh, bars on the outside of it is a, an abbreviated form of a matrix we don't know the, the dimensions of. Um, and the one in the middle here is just sort of a generic matrix. All right, this really should have a dot 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 in between the second and the i throw and between the i throw and the m throw to indicate there are missing rows there just to kind of bring this one full circle i can look at this and say well this matrix is i by j that's its size the size of this matrix is i by j it has i rows and j columns so that in a nutshell is what a matrix is uh, that is usually, at least for our purposes, where it comes from. And so now what we're going to look at is some of the properties of matrices, some of the different kinds of matrices that you can, uh, that you'll run across. And right, well, so we'll just do that in the next video.